I don't look at it as a radio station. I look at it as a clubhouse. I look at it as this is where everybody mm. meets. This is what where we come together and have a good time. I look at this as it's not just a job. It's a place. It's kind of like we just all meet here, you mm. know. Hey, you know, people have their little spots around the Tennessee Valley. Hey, meet me over here because they have a good time at that place. And I'm hoping people feel that way when they tune in that, hey, this is where we meet. And we always have a good time when we come to WHRP, you know. We should call it Club WHRP. Club WHRP. That sounds good. (laughs) Free biscuits. Hello, Huntsville. Hello. Hello. Hello, Huntsville. Hello Huntsville, I'm Cynthia Joyner. Welcome to another edition of this podcast about all things Huntsville. Today, media personalities. Tony Terrell and T. Mill at 94.1 WHRP Radio. Tony, how in the world did you end up here in the Rocket City? Oh my goodness. Well, originally from Berkeley, California and um, grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, started my radio career there and um, in Northern California, Southern California, moved on to Texas, eventually Colorado, found my way in Huntsville by a phone call. A uh, phone call from a gentleman by the name of Mark Raymond, who was the program director here at WHRP, and that was in 2006. I don't know how I got here, <laughs> I believe, on a blessing because I was looking for um, a smaller market, smaller town, wanted to just kind of have a little bit of fun. Um, maybe help build up a radio station. Well, my dream came true because um, they were starting WHRP as an adult format when I got the phone call. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So when you're traveling back to your, um, you've been to several different cities from what you just mm-hmm. told me, but when you go back to your real place, when yeah. you go back to that place, what do you tell the folks uh, there about the Huntsvillians? Well, I used to do, when I first got here, because a whole different culture, um, different um, way of communication, the whole Southern um, love and um, people being a little more open to and friendlier uh, than living in a bigger city. So those are the things that I would share. Um, It's very interesting, I think, you know, um, the age that I was when I got here in 2006, I was in my mid 40s and any woman could relate to this. It is hard to make a good woman friend. I've managed to make at least five that feel like sisters here, something that I don't think would have happened in a larger market. Um, That's one thing. I used to call it the Alabama report and call back home and say, let me tell you what they did today uh, here in Huntsville. I, I don't want to stereotype it, but it kind of reminds me of those small town television shows that they used to have on TV when I first first got here, like Green Acres, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Andy Griffith, <laughs> you know, just a, and it wasn't that small of a town, but to me, it felt that way coming from a larger city. Wow, wow, yeah. Green Acres, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was a stretch. <laughs> And one thing I like about living here is that vibe, um, the family uh, vibe of making me feel like I'm part of a big family here. You know, um, the generosity, the um, outpour of love and uh, allowing me to become kind of a, a local now. I've been here 17 years, you know, and so this is second home now for me. So it's that Southern hospitality that just... Oh my gosh, it's real. It is real. Um, The first year I was here, uh, you know, any job, you don't get any vacation. (laughs) You have to, you know, build it up and everything. So we're going into the holiday season and it was um, time for Thanksgiving and I was working and I went on the air and I said, man, I sure miss my sister's brownies and grandma's cooking and this and the other. Someone called me who I met at the Alabama A&M homecoming celebration that September. 
she called me. She said, hey, I met you a couple of times. I heard you on the air. You're welcome to come over to our house for dinner. I was a little nervous, but I said, you've got to do it. That's that Southern hospitality <laughs> people talk about. So I did, and we're still friends to this day. Wow. Yeah. I'm waiting for a phone call like that because <laughs> I'm so exhausted around Thanksgiving. Yeah. I, I don't want to pick up a pot pan, not right. even a glass of water from working. So I'm waiting for that type of phone Somebody call. please call Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> Often when I'm listening to you on the radio, I hear this, this name references, your best girlfriend. I'm like, best girlfriend? How'd you come up with that? How did you become known for that name? Yeah, that goes all the way back to the 90s. I don't even think T-Mail was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, oftentimes radio personalities, they'll come up with some type of branding and things like that. And um, I found myself um, one day saying, I don't have any cool name or anything like that. So uh, I realized that I have a lot of male friends and female friends and we're all the, the guys were calling, hey, girlfriend, how you doing? You know, and it was that, and I, it just kind of clicked, and I'm like, and then a lot of my friends said, man, you're one of the best friends because you know how to keep a secret, and that's how it started to evolve and develop into, I am your best girlfriend. I am your best girlfriend. I am your best girlfriend. So that's how it pretty much all started, and uh, one day I got a call from my aunt, and um, I had this big secret from her son, my cousin. And I never said anything. And then he told her whatever it was. And she asked him, did anybody else in the family know? And he mentioned me. And so she called me. She says, you really are the best girlfriend because I've talked to you several times and you never said anything. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, it, it, it kind of stuck. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, we're going to uh, play a little musical chairs here. And we're okay. going to uh, switch over to T-Mail, your, your sidekick. Um, I like to ask him a few questions, talk a little bit about radio, where you, you know where you grew up. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, uh, T. Mill, were you born and raised in the Huntsville area? Tell us a little bit about your background, your upbringing. Yeah, so I was born in Birmingham and raised in Huntsville. Okay. Uh, we moved to uh, Minnesota around, you know, when I was three years old. My grandparents were in the military and settled in Huntsville at Oakwood. So Oakwood College brought my mom back to Huntsville and a lot of the places I grew up in Huntsville no longer exist or they've transformed. I graduated from Stone Middle School, which everyone knows now as Campus 805, and J.O. Johnson, which is now the Johnson Legacy Complex, and of course Jemison has become, uh, taken over the Jaguars. And so growing up in Huntsville, it's, I've seen the growth. I remember when Madison was, you know, really empty and seeing all the growth. And I always knew, believe it or not, that there was a lot of opportunity for growth. I didn't know what it was going to grow into, but it just felt special that there was something here that, you know, would keep me here and keep me interested. Tell us uh, what neighborhood did you grow up in? Just about every one of them. You name it. I grew up, <laughs> my family grew up on the north side of Huntsville, uh, my grandparents, and then my mother, we grew up on the west side of Huntsville, and then we had friends, of course, on the south side of Huntsville and the uh, east, but primarily the north side and west side of Huntsville grew up. And I always make the joke that I went, I counted it on Facebook the other day that I went to about 12 different schools in Huntsville. Wow. So elementary <laughs> schools, you name it, whatever school was there at the time, I grew up there. So <laughs> uh, also Council Court, which is no longer here, that was uh, downtown, spent a lot of time there. So it's, uh, you know, strange to go there and, and, and you, you see the growth in what was there. But I made a lot of friends through growing up without, without, at all those schools, and that allowed me the opportunity to learn different backgrounds, different ethnicities, and try to get along with people. Wow, wow. So what would you say now would be one of your favorite uh, neighborhoods in the area? Favorite neighborhood in the area? <laughs> Still the North Side. North Side has got, there's, there's a charm about it, there's a history there, there's the traditional, what you, think of as a neighborhood and you watch on television and sitcoms and neighbors mowing their yards and backyard barbecues and now going back to my grandmother's uh, house on the north side we were children growing up there for Thanksgiving's Christmases and now we've grown up and we have kids and our kids are growing up in those neighborhoods and so that neighborhood charm is something that I, I really like about the area so 
North side all day. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a lot in common. I'm a Jaguar. I grew up in Northwest Huntsville. So, yeah. yeah so, uh, so my best days were in Northwest Huntsville. So I'm proud to be from Northwest Huntsville. Yeah, absolutely. What, uh, what can you think of that makes Huntsville so special to you? I think the melting pot aspect. So the military bringing a lot of different families here from all over. And it feels like one of those places where you're going to meet people from all walks of life, different experiences, different opportunities. And if you lean into that and, you know, have dinner with someone that looks different than you, maybe different beliefs and different you know, way of life and, and is positive, you know, and is love and things like that. But open yourself up to learning different things, different cultures, languages. Um, I think it, it helps you become a better person, you know, just to understand that. Essentially, we're all the same, but we grow up in different walks of life, and I think that's just the charm about Huntsville. Hunts Huntsville's a very charming place. It has its challenges, just like anywhere else, but I think the different perspectives, the history that's here, uh, a lot of black history that's here, and trying to keep that alive makes it a, a really charming place to be. Who are some of your local favorite people and why? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> local you start favorite, with me. Local favorite people, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Tony is is definitely on that list, and as of late, because I've everything that I've learned about radio, everything that I've wanted to learn about radio, she's she's definitely been that coach and that mentor and that guide that has has really. Yeah, I equate it to sports. You want a coach that's or a team that's going to lead you to the championship. It may not be easy, but you want someone that knows what they're talking about. And I've trusted her to lead the way, whether I agree with it or whether it makes me comfortable or what. As long as we win the championship and we get there, I'm all for it. So she's been great uh, in that sense. And everything that she's told me has come true. <laughs> so, you know, uh, there's the running joke that she's a genius. but it, It's not hey. a joke. <laughs> it's gospel. So it's a joke? <laughs> no, no. Oh, all right. <laughs> so it's been great, you know. And uh, outside of that, um, just my grandfather is definitely, uh, to me, one of my local heroes because he was the reason my family moved here in the first place to teach at Oakwood College and started my interest in radio. Of course, there's people like Kelvin Wooten and my interest in music. And I look at a guy who didn't leave Huntsville. He didn't have to leave Huntsville in order to make it big. I thought you had to move to L.A. or move to Atlanta or New York and people like him that make it successful from Huntsville. Uh, also, uh, Cody Gopher is a uh, another inspiration and just someone I look up to as a mentor. And yeah, a couple locals. If I, if I keep going, I'm gonna forget someone, so I can't name them all. Uh, and the biggest one of all would, of course, be my mom, because without her raising us here and, and teaching us what she loves about music and investing in us, then I wouldn't be here having this conversation with you today. So you're a local boy who, who made, a, um, <clears throat> made it big. What advice would you give to the younger generation? Just do it, whatever it is that you want to do. I know it sounds cliche, but there's the technology is here. The opportunities are here more than it's ever been. Uh, there's a much bigger opportunity for, for whatever you have in your imagination. So whatever it is that you want to do, find that tribe or do it by yourself. I say just don't be afraid. Jump right into it and, and do it and then surround yourself with the people that are a little bit ahead of you that can that you can learn from, that you can teach. Um, and don't be afraid to take criticism. But whatever it is that you want to do, there's no excuse. There's, there's really not. Just do it. Like Nike said, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the next questions are going to be for both of you. So you both can kind of like um, share your you know comments sure. on each tell can you tell us what's the best part about hosting a morning show mm. connecting to our audience in a way that makes them feel happy in the morning uh, knowing that you are sharing a very oh man um, delicate time of the day uh, depending on your circumstance and hoping that you are getting someone out of a bad mood 
And I think the fun part is when we give away prizes. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. Giving yeah. away prizes is fun. And giving the community, there's so much that we have here and we don't have to listen to outside shows and it's one thing to wake up and we've all listened to you know syndicated shows but it's things that it's happening in other cities or you don't feel a part of it you don't feel like it's happening in your backyard and and we we can be proud of the things that we're doing here the concerts the entertainment the food the growth and it feels like we're part of the conversation along with the rest of the Tennessee Valley and so it feels like we're all having a conversation at the breakfast table or, you know, the patio, and we're all waking up together to be a part of everyone's morning, and that feels pretty good. Yeah, and you know, it's a personal thing. So anyone who tunes in, they made that personal decision for us to be a part of their time and their life in the morning, you know. Uh, it, this is how they get their day started, and it's an honor, actually, for them to choose us to, to be a part of their day. Yeah, it's personal. I mean, we're either in their home or we're in their car. They're allowing us to talk to their kids if they have kids that they're transporting in the morning. Um, you know, so we don't take it lightly by no means. Yeah. Who, who would you say your listeners are? What type of people are they? Oh, man. Um, we have a lot of um, business women that listen to the, the show. Um, T-Mail seems to pull in a lot of cuckoo for Cocoa Puff people. Party people. Those are all his people. <laughs> Party people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we. it's really interesting when we go out to different events in the community to meet who's listening to us. And I've seen almost everyone from grandparents to people who are retired, uh, young professionals, it's a whole wide spectrum of the family that's listening, you know. So I don't, I can't put my finger on one or the other. But I think my favorite is, and this happened to me um, not long ago at uh, the uh, Jazz in the Park concert series. Had a little girl, six years old, and I don't often get on the stage these days, but I did this time, and she heard my voice, and she told her grandmother, "That's the lady on the radio. I want to meet her." And so she came over and I was able to meet her. And to know that a six-year-old is entertained and feels comfortable with our show that is really targeted for adults, that made me feel really good. Yeah. Wow, wow. So you guys have a uh, unique partnership, a working relationship. And I don't want to start a fight, but who's the brains behind the group? Oh, Tony, all day. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, all day. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Here comes the rage. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because she's she's got the knowledge, the experience. And, you know, as we were training in the beginning and putting this show together, I always equate it to the Mr. Miyagi method. You don't know why she's teaching you to wash the car this way or, you know, plant these plants. But it all comes later on you figure out this is why she's teaching it to you this way and you have to trust that process and now being a two three years now <laughs> going into the show about three years the things that she taught me the suggestions the recommendations uh the times that i got it wrong and she would tell me how to get it right those all came to fruition and those all came true so you know that she knows what she's talking about if you would have let it left it up to me to come up with the show we wouldn't be here now having the show you know and not in this capacity so She's definitely the, the brains behind it, for sure. Pinky and the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, what's your favorite favorite thing to talk about on the show? Mm. Ooh, well, um, I like talk, talking about what's happening around the Huntsville, um, Madison, Decatur, the Tennessee Valley. You know, I like giving people the knowledge and the information of what's happening even if it's from someone breaking out of a jail to someone you know making a great achievement to a good uh, a great kiddo we have the good news in the neighborhood that mm -hmm. allows us it allows people to go to our website tell us what you're doing the fun things the um, helpful things and so we do that another great thing I love is exposing a brand new small business we call it that my that's my business mm -hmm. and so people can go to our website and tell us about their small business and just giving them that little push that little bit of exposure for the first time those are fun things to me 
But hey, Tony's Tattletales, ooh, oh, that's, that's the juice. <laughs> <laughs> the gossip. The tea. <laughs> what about you, too? Uh, for sure. Um, the resources. There's a saying that goes, uh, serve the needs of others and all your own will be fulfilled. So there's so many resources here, things that people are looking for, things that they need uh, for families, whether it's food resources, whether it's education resources, graduation resources, uh, homes, things like that. So there's a lot of information that we're able to share with people of great organizations and people that are doing great things when they say, hey, who's hiring? We get to tell all the you know, new jobs that are hiring or places that are giving away food or resources, things like that. Of course, there's, you know, the old school song of the day where we get to <laughs> tell everyone and break down lyrics that people have been singing wrong for years and tell them, you might have thought about this song this way, but this is really what this song is about. So that's fun as well. And then just talking about what's going on in our neighborhoods, the good that's happening in our neighborhoods. There's, there's enough bad and there's enough, you know, violence that we could talk about, but there's so much good stuff that we can talk about. And that feels good. And every now and then talk about biscuits. So yeah, gotta have biscuits. Gotta have biscuits. Biscuits are important. So do you both come up with the material for each segment, or who's the uh, the lead who takes lead? We do split up the duties of uh, research, and uh, we're responsible for the segments that we uh, do. Like he has the um, Black History Minute, mm -hmm. Alabama Black History Minute. He's responsible for coming up with that information. I'm responsible for coming up the, with the most important part of the show, and that's Tony's Tattletale. Tattletale. <laughs> what? Other people's business. That is so important because uh, it makes you feel better about your own life <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it's wacky. Uh, but no, we do split up the duties of um, different um, segments that we do. And then we have like just a common ground of information that we share collectively. So he'll, he's going to see things that I'm not going to see, you mm -hmm. know, and we look at news different. Uh, there's a different there's an age difference here, you know, by maybe two years. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm 25. So, uh, so that really, it really gives us good balance for, um, you know, in this business, you have a target audience and, you know, our span is like 25, 54 in age that we're really targeting and to give that information out. So, yeah. Can you tell us about some of your most popular segments? What are our most popular segments? Tattletales, Tattletales. all day. <laughs> I think, you know, with Tattletales, you hear the same gossip almost everywhere. It's the delivery. It's the exaggeration, you know. Um, it's the putting in the fun of something that might be a little uncomfortable, you know. And how can you put a twist on things to make it comfortable for everybody to listen to in, in that's listening? If it's a family... You don't want to be, um, you know, obnoxious, you know, and or insulting. But so how do you put a twist on it to add a little humor and still deliver the information? Yeah. Close runner up would be the old school song of the day. Whenever we're getting feedback from people in the community or we're out at events, generally someone's going to mention the old school song of the day. Or while we're breaking the lyrics down. I'll get an inbox, you know, from someone that says, T-Mill, that is not what that song means. No, you got it wrong. Or they'll mention, they'll say, I never thought about it that way. The way Tony mm -hmm. broke it down. Oh, my God. I, that's what they meant in that song. Yeah. So that's definitely a, a popular segment. Okay. Tony, sounds like you know how to break things down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> break a few things down. I can do the breakdown, the old school dance. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you guys are known for waking the city up every weekday morning. What wakes you up? Wow. Mm. Mm, that's a good one. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, for me, in the morning when that alarm goes, I'm a one and done. The alarm goes off, I'm up two feet on the floor, let's go. Uh, something I was taught as a young girl. There's, it, you're not going to catch any more rest. The whole snooze is a joke. It's not, you're not getting any more. You're <laughs> making yourself more tired. So I get up as soon as the alarm comes on and um, I turn on the news to see what's going on. And I think what gets me going is in my mind, I think of people behind the wheel listening to us having a hard time going to work. I think about the real things that are happening. 
the inflation, you know, whatever, what could other people be going through? I may not live their life, but I try to think about the life they may be living. And when they turn the radio on, now, a lot of people don't know, we actually warm up the show at five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Wake up workout mix. The wake up workout mix. So for 25 minutes, we're, that's what gets us going. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of teasing about what we're going to talk about. And then T-Mill does a couple of breaks. Mm -hmm. I just won't come on the air for real until six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you guys doing yeah. jumping jacks or? It's the mix, I think. I think it's the music that gets us hyped, oh. and, you know, and it, we're, we're up just kind of getting in the groove and everything. There's no jumping jacks, but, but in my mind, I'm thinking someone's going to work like, oh my goodness, oh, this is tough. And we come on and like, you can do it. You know, we're, mm -hmm. and that's why we start that 5 a.m. off at, with that mix. You can do it, you got this, you know, let's come on, let's, we're trying to put a little fire under you, you know, we, we're all in this together. And I'm hopeful that somewhere between six and 10, we made you smile, made you feel better about this day. So that's a way of staying upbeat, it keeps you going, would yeah. you say? Yeah, that mix is not necessarily for everyone. I think it's for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to warm up and make sure no, that we're awake. <laughs> exactly. It does something to you. About 10 minutes in, 15 minutes into that mix, you're like, whoo, yeah, I feel better, you know. <laughs> for sure. For me, what gets me up is, and it sounds cliche, but purpose, you know, and, and having a purpose of doing something that you want to do, something that you like to do. And every morning, it feels like, coming to you know coming to the studio coming to the show it, it's the the cafeteria breakfast theory at high school you know you get to the cafeteria your friends are there you're meeting your friends and you're talking about what you did last night what you're going to do today what time you're going to take your nap and go to sleep in class who's who's playing at the game so you're having that conversation or when you get to work in the morning and you see the the one or two people that you love to work with and you go, oh, they're at work today. Okay, great. It's going to be a good day. You know, I can't, man, let me tell you what happened last <laughs> night. And you talk amongst each other and it's that whole neighbor community friendly aspect. So when you, you know, getting up in the morning, that's what I look forward to of talking to my neighbors, talking to my friends, you know, learning about what, what did they do last night? Where did they go? Did they go see a show somewhere? You know, what new restaurant opened up? What's happening with their kids? You know, what game are we watching? What television show are we watching? And having that conversation with each other. Because it is a, you know, uh, a conversation with our listeners. It's not just one-sided. It's literally a conversation. Can you tell us about any um, behind-the-scenes stories that your listeners may not know about? Ooh, what do you mean, Cynthia? Huh? Huh? <laughs> what? what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, like behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. What happens behind the scenes? Oh, you mean like when we turn the microphones off and the music's playing and people are wondering what we're doing? Yes. <laughs> I'm probably fussing at T-Mill. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, you know, it's, it's, there's a, a lot of conversations we're having, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we will go on Facebook back to the conversation standpoint you know while we're doing the show if there's a couple songs that we're listening to we'll, you know wake up we'll go on facebook live hey everyone good morning what you know what's going on you know how you know what's everyone doing this morning you going to the game having conversations or also talking about what are we going to talk about next you know what's working what do we need to work on and things like that we're not every day it's not settled to say oh yeah we know what we're doing making mm -hmm. sure that we're staying on top of things you know the, like tony says it's like you know flying a plane you're not gonna get up and just let everything go th until you land <laughs> you gotta keep your eyes on everything on everything <laughs> one thing i like about working with t-mill is we just naturally bounce off we have no scripts other than when we need to get the facts right mm -hmm. you know for a story in the news everything's off the cuff and everything is from the heart. And um, he's a little bigger than I thought to be my mini me, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel that it was just a natural, mm -hmm. compatible thing with us. And, I, and, and like I said it before, it's, it's just a prayer. And um, I think we've gotten to know each other to the point where we almost know where each other's going, but then again, not so much, because you never know what he might say. <laughs> That's totally a left field. And I'm like, 
huh? <laughs> and I've got to roll with this, you know? <laughs> And it's also uh, things we do, you know, off the mic is making sure that we're accountable, uh, that we're responsible and we're not just throwing out facts or throwing out information that we're not checking on ourselves mm -hmm. uh, to also make sure if if we said we're going to give away tickets this morning, guess what? We got to give away those tickets oh, yeah. this morning. If we said we were going to call someone back or do an interview or we, you know, there's there's a lot of checks and balances that we want to make sure that we're committed and we're accountable to the listeners and we're not just blowing smoke and making promises that we're not keeping or that we're misinforming them because if they are to share that fact, where'd you hear that? <laughs> you know, on the morning show with Tony with T Mill, they're gonna come after us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're making sure they're informed and we're committed and accountable to the information that we're giving them and not just, you know, spewing out untrue facts. I really think that we have a, a lot of magic here in Huntsville. So I think that they should really pour into that and explore and, and go on different sides of Huntsville. If you're always hanging out on the north side, go to the west side sometimes. If you're always on the south side, come over to the north side sometimes and really explore and find out what connects with you. Because there's so much, you know, here to do. And there's, you know, a lot that you can have some fun with and, and learn, you know, and just learn different things. Tony, this question is for you. Uh, why do you think uh, local radio is necessary? Um, the first thing that pops in my mind is April of 2011, when we had the tornado outbreak here. That's why it's important. Mm -hmm. um, when people are going through a pandemic and they don't know where the next check is gonna come from and where they can find food, that's why it's important. Um, you know, just getting the information out, not days later when it's needed right now, the urgency of and need of information, that's why it's important. Um, local radio that connects to us where we live, not getting secondhand information that's not accurate, that, you know, it can help you right now, not days later, that's why it's important. Any emergency can happen at any given time. And if you don't have local radio, nine times out of 10, you're not watching TV. Social media is great, but for your constant ongoing, and we even link to a local news outlet that can continue to give us the information. And the connection that you have with your audience. People know who I am. They see me in the community. We rub elbows, we hug, we cry, we laugh. They know what I'm going to give them is real. They know me. They don't know the syndicated person or the person that's from a whole nother state. They know who I am. I'm right here. I'm with you. I'm your neighbor. That's why it's important. Not to mention we need that great music while driving to work. Music is so soothing and I tell you um, it's healing and we've gone through some challenges here um, because of the the weather patterns that come through and um, I remember like yesterday um, ending the day during that week of the tornadoes and when it felt a little uncomfortable it was already uncomfortable but when people were just feeling like I don't know what's going to happen next and putting on a song that gives you a positive feeling like a gospel song or giving you that song that reminds you of the good old days and you felt good when you heard it or that relaxing song that allows your stress level to go down it's very important or the one that just makes you want to dance and makes you feel good you know uh, that song that people share, you know, there's those those generational songs that people share. Hey, my grandmother used to play that. My mom used to play that. Now I'm li I'm listening to mm -hmm. it because I love it because it reminds me of Thanksgiving. It reminds me of a backyard barbecue or a birthday party. And we always play that one song and we do a line dance together. Those are those generational songs. So, yes, music is very important, but the information to get it right away from the people you know and trust is very important. That's why local radio is important. Well, one of my go-to songs is um, Lovely Day by Bill Withers because it song. brings yeah. back my childhood memories. Yeah. Uh, 
not to mention uh, when I grew up, um, it was on an LP, so that's going to give you a little more information than you need. But anyway, there was a radio station, a local radio station called WOOL, I was living in Dothan, Alabama at the time, and so they needed the 10th caller, and during that time, it was the rotary phone, so you had to work real fast. You had to really be But fast. I did it, girlfriend, and I won the LP. My dad took me to pick up my LP and his pickup truck and uh, that's to this day that's one of my favorite pick me up songs and yes. I nice. listen to it on the radio because it's going to be a lovely day. Nice, I love, love it. That. Yeah, yes. for sure. Hello Huntsville is hosted by Cynthia Joyner. Cynthia Joyner and Jeff Morlock are the executive producers. This podcast is produced and directed by Keith Matthews and David Person. Jake Martin and Hans Guger provided remote and in-studio audio engineering and other technical support. Chad Bell is the production administrator. The podcast theme was written and produced by Kyle Wimbish and David Person. Spread the word about Hello Huntsville, the first podcast that makes Huntsville, Alabama, the star.